everydaygamers.com. Um, well, I love the first game a lot. They could have added so much more to that. And they, they could have included a lot more from the, the ground um, when, they, when they came out with that game. But the, uh, the cool thing with this is it looks like there's new weapons, a lot more handheld weapons. You see some chainsaws some stuff like that. And it's definitely a game that uh, will be a day one purchase, I think, um, at least for me. We saw Splinter Cell Conviction. Um, it's been a long time since we've seen a lot on that. And uh, it looks like it's kind of changed a little bit. Actually, it looks pretty interesting. The one thing that I'll note from that little announcement is whoever Ubisoft had doing that, it, it really, you could tell that it was scripted. And um, obviously, everything that, when somebody goes up there on, on stage, they have this script that they're going to go by. Uh, however, this seems so scripted, it, it just, it was almost annoying to hear the guy talk, but uh, overall, the gameplay looked really good for it. Um, then we saw Forza 3, which uh, I'll be picking up that game. I don't know if it's a day one purchase, but one of the main reasons is because of the, um, the, the, the paint and the customization feature of that game. Forza 2, I spent so many hours just to, you know, messing around with the paint scheme and uh, I thought that that was a great thing. Uh, they had a slip up. The uh, the guy who was talking about the game said that there's 400 manufacturers, car manufacturers included in the game, and I was. <laughs> and then he did correct himself, but it was kind of funny. 400 car manufacturers. I don't think that 400 car manufacturers exist. Halo OD ODST was announced, or uh, we already knew about this game, but they showed gameplay footage. Um, actually, looks pretty good, and I'm not a Halo fan, but. Um, it did look good, but the, the big surprise was Halo Reach, which don't know a lot about. They didn't tell you a lot, um, but from the way they presented it, it actually really caught my attention. Now, they did say that they're going to include um, access to the beta for anybody who purchases uh, Halo ODST, so it's actually something that's kind of caught my attention now. Uh, like I said, I'm not the biggest Halo fan, but I am looking forward to actually taking a look at these games. Then, the big thing that I think, well, one of the bigger things we saw was uh, Alan Wake. And actually, we saw gameplay footage of this. And uh, they actually were on stage playing the game. And uh, the game looks really good. I was, um, I'm not going to say I was surprised, but it, it just seemed like it was something that was, like, almost being pushed back so much. And we'd heard so much stuff about it that, we, you know, I was starting to wonder myself, we ever going to see this so they gave us you know kind of a, a, um, a soft uh, date for it spring 2010 hopefully uh, hopefully we'll see it and hopefully it will uh, shape up to be what you know all of us want from that game or at least the ones who are fans then they got away from the software and they kind of started looking at some of the things that they're adding to Xbox Live Last FM was announced for it, which is uh, just going to be like a, a almost like an online radio service. It's going to be free, so that's kind of a nice thing. Um, you know, if anybody's got a nice sound surround sound system, um, it would be nice. And if you get that in your, if you have your 360 in your living room, definitely something that'll be kind of a cool feature. Uh, Sky TV that was announced, but that's only um, in Europe, so uh, for us American gamers, not a big deal. Um, instant on. 1080p HD was something that they kind of made mention of uh, and it's basically just a service so to, to where you can actually play and and actually get the video footage and download movies and, and play it instantaneously in 1080p um, to me not a big deal I actually like to own the movies that I have I guess this will be a cool feature for renting and stuff like that but um, you know it seems like they're really forcing this digital distribution on you and um, you know it's kind of one of those things that I guess it's inevitable but hopefully it's not the way all of this stuff goes uh, because I actually like owning hard copies of my stuff um, the other two big things that they kind of announced and, I, and it's big for some people is Facebook and Twitter coming to Xbox Live Facebook I've never actually you know mess with uh, I've had a lot of people who said you gotta get on Facebook to me uh, I'm not big on Facebook Obviously, my thing is YouTube. Um, that's why I'm on here so often. But uh, the Twitter thing is actually a cool thing. I, I, I do a little bit of Twitter myself. I've got um, some people that I follow on Twitter. So being able to have that through Xbox Live is kind of a cool feature. Um, they did announce something with Facebook called Facebook Connect where you can take in-game photos, snap pictures, and then upload that and uh, send 
immediately to your friends. So that's kind of a cool feature. And then they got into some more game announcements. Um, they had Hideo Kojima come out, and he actually announced MGS for the 360 now. Not MGS 4, but MGS Rising, which is going to bring Raiden back into the series. Um, didn't show a lot. They showed just a really brief snippet, snippet but um, it's definitely something that I feel is a, a win for Microsoft to be able to get that. And then, last but definitely not least, I think the biggest thing that Microsoft shown was um, Project Natal. For any of you guys out there who don't know what I'm talking about, you should go check out video on this. Um, essentially, it's a system that you will be connecting to your 360. Um, a little bit of, looks sort of like a DVD player. But this thing has um, facial recognition, has body recognition, um, voice recognition, so that no longer are you going to use a, a controller. I don't know how the gameplay is going to play. And uh, I was kind of questioning that. But what they did is they brought in Pierre Manu from Lionhead Studios, obviously, of um, uh, Fable fame. Uh, you know, you, uh, you guys should know him from Fable. And he showed off a game that they've been working at, um, working on at Lionhead Studios called Milo. It's not necessarily a game, but it's more of an interactive thing, um, I would say, uh, where you're, you're interacting with this kid on screen. His name's Milo. Um, and they showed some amazing things with that where... You know, you're talking with him. He's recognizing what you're saying. He's responding to what you're saying. Um, he actually asks you at one point near the end of it to uh, help him out with, with a picture that he wants to draw. And it's amazing. You take the piece of paper. The, the girl showing who was doing the demonstration took the piece of paper, drew a fish on the piece of paper, stuck it to the TV, and he grabbed it. Um, and it showed up on, on screen. And... You know, at one point he actually tosses you a pair of goggles and she goes and catches it. So, what they're able to do with this, I think is going to be amazing. It's definitely going to revolutionize um, the way that games are played. A lot like the Wii Remote did, and, and probably to a further extent. Now, whether or not it's going to work on, on, on all applications, I don't think so. But uh, I think it's very interesting, and just their demonstration of what you can do with it really has me excited but uh, I'm running out of time so I want to go ahead and wrap this up thanks guys for checking out um, this video um, as always if you have questions feel free to let me know make a comment you know rate subscribe um, overall I would give Microsoft's press conference an A uh, I just think that it was incredible and it's gonna be interesting to see how Sony and Nintendo follow this one up because I feel like they have definitely set the bar very high um, anyways, thanks again guys, and I will talk to you all soon.